Odyssey Newsroom. Here with me is my co-anchor, Rishi Jaswal, and I am Eli Stockman. Thank you, Eli. Our main story today will be about the civil rights movement. Recently, there has been some commotion about the decision to mix whites and Negroes in school by the Supreme Court. Across the country, there has been an outbreak of rage at this shocking decision. Just last year, the Supreme Court ruled unconstitutional to segregate in schools. Let's take this to our civil rights correspondent down in Mississippi. Christian? Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So what do you think of the recent publicity on this integration decision and the Jim Crow laws? Christian? Well, Rishi, I think the decision will, is very controversial and will result in outbreaks of violence, which is the last thing we need. In my opinion, whites and Negroes should have separate school systems. Thank you for your time, Christian. We'll have more on the news after this break. Let's cut to the chase. How do you feel about segregation in the South? And do you think this, the decisions in school should help? I do not think people are being fair about not including neighbors in a good education or like, and nothing like that. The other day, I was drinking out of White Bar's Fountain and I almost got arrested. Instead, they beat me up. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Forever. All right. Welcome to our viewers today where we have some breaking news coming out of the small town of Money, Mississippi. Just a few days ago, a Negro from Chicago was kidnapped by three men. Two men have admitted to the kidnapping, but the third acquaintance is yet to be found. That's right, Rishi. Right now, officials have just pulled out a disgusting, appalling body of Emmett Till. We are about to show some pictures that may be disturbing to some viewers. Must know something, but he don't say nothing. He just keeps rolling. He keeps on rolling along. Three go. As you have seen in this devastating slideshow, Chicago youth Emmett Till has been murdered. Our show today is a tribute to him his family, and his actions. We reached out to the love zones of Emmett Lewis Till. Emmett has been missing for three days and was found by a local fisherman at Pecan Point, floating in the Tallahatchie. He was missing one eye, was shot, and he was lynched with a cotton gin. In addition, his face was bloated from being in the river for so long. Here to talk with us today about these tragic events is NAACP Vice President. Roy Wilkins. Roy, how do you guys at NAACP feel about these sh shocking accidents? Well, Rishi, here at the NAACP, we are the nation's oldest and largest civil rights organization where we fight for equality for African Americans. We are in, the, in disbelief at this tragic incident. What steps do you think the NAACP will take after these acts of injustice? Well, Rishi, we will work in tandem with other civil rights corporations, such as the Southern Christian Leadership and Congress of Racial Equality, to protest peacefully against this madness. This act of hate and violence will not go unnoticed, and what they did to that boy was appalling and inhumane. Movement? Hopefully, it will. Right now, everything is separated in schools, buses, hospitals, bathrooms, theaters, and parks. 
and even interracial marriage is illegal. However, we are making steps forward, such as with the Federal Interstate Commerce Commission, ruling it illegal to segregate on trains. So, in conclusion, we hope people now will be able to accept Negroes as equals. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the RCE News. Here I am, Rishi Jaswal, with my co-anchor, Eli Stockman. We have a developing story coming out of the Montgomery, Alabama. Recently, on December 1st, Rosa Parks was arrested for no refusing to follow driver's orders to give her seat up to a white person. The Negroes in Montgomery have responded, responded to this by starting a bus boycott. This will have a terrible effect on the Montgomery bus systems considering 75% of its riders are black. Actually, Rishi, it are, we have just received news that it already has started. African Americans have already begun their non-violent protests. We have pulled a quote from one of the boycotters, Mother Paula. My feet is weary, but my soul is rested. Despite the peace on the part of the Negroes, whites have resorted to violence as they bombed Martin Luther King Jr.'s home. As we've told you, this whole event has sprouted from Rosa Parks. We've pulled some quotes on her actions. I thought about Emmett Till, and I cannot get back. My legs and feet were not tired. That is a stereotype. I paid the same fare as others, and I left violated. I was not going back. This called MLK and E.D. Nixon, the leaders of the bus boycott, to explain. E.D. Nixon explains here. What's the matter with you people? Here you have been living off the sweat of these washwomen all these years, and you have never done anything for them. Now you have a chance to pay them back, and you're, de and you're too dang scared to stand on your feet and be counted. The time has come where men is going to have to learn to be grown men or scared boys. Thank you very much for joining us on the RCE News. We will see you next time. Welcome to the RCE News. Here I am, Rishi Jaswa. My co-anchor, Eli Stockman, was not able to make it. We have just received more on the Montgomery bus boycott. In response to Montgomery's blacks boycotting the bus company, whites have switched to private taxis so they don't drive with Negroes. In other news reports, we have info on the Emmett Till trial, where a verdict has been reached. Bryant and Millam are not guilty. Jovial expressions on the faces of Millam and Bryant were shown as they reached the verdict not guilty in Sumner Courthouse. However, there is outrage on the part of Negroes. They believe that they are guilty. Here to, dedicate, here to debate the decision with us is Ku Klux Klan member Elaine Wilson. Alvin Wilson. I'm sorry, Elaine. Alvin. Well, I'd say that boy was lucky to escape the way he did. I bet those white men would have kidnapped him and tortured him every night until the day he died. And of course they're innocent. But if you say that they committed the crime, then how are they not guilty? White man killed a black boy who didn't know his place. Nothing wrong with that. It doesn't matter what he did. Nobody deserves to be treated and tortured the way he did. You're suggesting that white men should get charged for what they did to the black boy? <laughs> In a situation like this, race shouldn't matter. And if you ask me, the verdict was decided before the trial began. On another matter, what are your thoughts on the bus boycott? I think what they're doing is plain stupid, and we will continue our revolt against them. Somebody has to put a stop to this madness, and that would be the Ku Klux Klan. Certainly some interesting thoughts. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Welcome to the RC News. Here I am, Rishi Jaswal, with my co-anchor, Eli Stockman. Good day, Rishi. You may, you may remember two years ago we reported on a local Negro boy, Emmett Till. I do remember that tragic day, Eli. I also remember how the jury reached the verdict not guilty. Today, a retrial is taking place. Our civil rights correspondent, Christian Smita, has more on this topic. 
actually, Eli. Nothing is official yet. Here I am by the Tallahatchie River next to Sumner Courthouse, where officials are still trying to decide whether or not to reopen the case. Why is that? This is because of recent violent black protests causing much publicity towards the Turkeys. And after Bryant and Myram shockingly admitted to their kidnapping, murder, and torture of Emmett Till to Look Magazine, blacks are outraged. And after an unsuccessful attempt to murder the Greenwood Sheriff, the justice system is considering to reopen the case. However, Brian and Myram cannot be tried twice because of double jeopardy. Thank you for joining us, Christian. Welcome to the RC Newsroom. Here I am, Rishi Jaswal, with my co-anchor, Eli Stockman. Today, we bring you some devastating news. Martin Luther King Jr. has been assassinated. Yes, Eli, it is horrible news. Martin Luther King Jr. was an amazing man. All he wanted was for everyone to treat each other equally. Nothing more, nothing less. Martin Luther King Jr. was standing on the balcony of his motel room in Memphis when he was shot by a sniper. Martin Luther King Jr. helped people realize the good in others, made a great campaign, and was an overall good person. He and E.D. Nixon helped evolutionize the world. We will never forget the words and wisdom of Martin Luther King Jr. We will never forget MLK Jr. January 15, 1929 through April 4, 1968. Today is August 31st. It's a crucial day in civil rights history as Emmett Till was killed. Today we have a small presentation in honor of Till. He must know something 